Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today to learn about proton therapy as a treatment option for brain tumors. This is the first event in a brand new educational series where we'll be discussing proton therapy for various cancer types. My name is Lindsay Foster and I serve as the oncology liaison for the Texas Center for Proton Therapy. Today, our speaker is Dr. Victor Mangona. Dr. Mangona received his medical doctorate from Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. As chief resident, he completed his residency in radiation oncology with the Beaumont Health System in Royal Oak, Michigan. He also completed a fellowship in pediatric radiation oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Dr. Mangona has been with the Texas Center for Proton Therapy since the center opened in 2015. He specializes in proton therapy for pediatric patients, cancers of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, lymphoma, and sarcoma. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Mangona. So briefly again, there's 700,000 people 84,000 with a new diagnosis and 18,000 who will die in 2021. Okay, here's the picture. Here's the cyclotron on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna try to make the laser pointer work again if it wants to, but um, I will just draw, okay. Sorry, okay. So. Over here, okay, here's your the, the gantry, and this is the cyclotron. So the cyclotron generates the protons which come down this beam line, come down here, and they come out to the gantry, and from the gantry it points down to the patient. Okay, um, this gantry again is three stories tall, and uh, the person is right there. You can see me over here sitting underneath the gantry. The person is lying down on a table, which you see here. Okay, and here's the person actually in the room. Okay, the, the radiation beam is actually quite small and comes out of that. Okay, and the energy of the radiation beam is quite high and it allows uh, a lot of radiation to be delivered to the tumor and limited radiation to other parts of the body. So proton therapy can treat tumors basically in any part of the body. It damages and kills cancer cells and minimizes exposure to other tissue. The benefit of protons is that you have a better, we call risk benefit ratio. We have a higher proportion of benefits for the amount of risk we take or less risk for the amount of benefit we get. Okay, so we get high doses of radiation to the tumor. We have less dose to normal tissues. Okay. We have less side effects because we have less radiation to other tissues. We often can tolerate uh, treatment with concurrent or with chemotherapy at the same time, which often has a lot of side effects. Um, but because we have less radiation going to other parts of the body, this can be a lot more tolerable. And often doing radiation with chemo at the same time can improve control of the cancer and cancer outcomes. And because we have less side effects often, people are often better able to maintain their quality of their life. Uh, in, situ in certain situations, uh, protons allows us to give even higher doses of radiation to the tumor that than we can get with, with x-rays. And uh, higher doses can mean higher efficacy at treating and killing the cancer cells. So it can also be more effective cancer treatment in terms of killing tumor cells in comparison to x-rays in certain situations. Okay. Now, um, there are always side effects of any treatment. There are no treatments without any potential risks. Um, radiation therapy has associated risks, which are variable depending on what part of the body is treated and to what doses. Uh, with protons, again, it's usually less uh, risk of side effects, but we still have side effects. Now, uh, radiation does not cure everything. Okay, there's always a chance that radiation uh, does, um, does not uh, work for particular tumor cells in a particular person. 
Okay. Um, and in comparison to other types of radiation therapy, radiation with protons does tend to take a little bit longer, potentially uh, minimally longer, potentially substantially longer uh, in the room. But uh, again, it's still usually less than an hour per person and often closer to like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Here's a very good example of how proton radiation can be a lot safer for a patient. When we use proton radiation, okay, and a person who needs to receive radiation to their whole brain and spine, okay, for example, um, there's a tumor called medulloblastoma where the whole brain and spine needs to be treated, okay, and so, when we have to treat that whole area, if we do it with protons, the radiation can enter the body and we can tell it where to stop. And it does not go all the way through the body. We can treat basically just what we need to treat. There's still a little bit of extra radiation on the way in, okay, but there's no radiation on the way out. And, and in comparison, if we were to use we call x-ray radiation. X-ray radiation goes all the way through a person's body. Okay, and that allows radiation to cause a lot more injury to the parts of the body in the front, the heart, the lungs, the abdomen, that don't need to receive any radiation. So this is the traditional x-ray form, and here is the proton form on the left. If you were to subtract those two amounts, we actually can calculate the difference between them. And the difference is what you see here on the right side. Okay, so we have substantially more radiation in this person on the right side than uh, when they're getting x-rays as opposed to protons. And x-rays are often called photons, which is what you see here at the top. Now, we also have to treat tumors often that are in the brain and not have to treat other parts of the brain. Okay, so this is a picture of somebody's brain. They're lying on flat on their head and we're looking at them from the bottom. And we have to treat this area here. Okay. Well, that area is going to get treated regardless if we use protons or photons. But you can see again with photons, we have a lot of extra radiation that does not need to go there. And that extra radiation has increased risks. Okay, because that radiation does not need to be there. And so we don't have to uh, cause those potential side effects when we're treating with protons. Okay, uh, here's another picture of, of a brain. Okay, and we can see the difference when we're treating a tumor on the side here. Okay, the tumor on the side, we have radiation going in and stopping with protons. And with x-rays, it goes all the way through. They'll usually use a number of beams from different directions. And you can see how that causes a spray of lower dose radiation. Okay, these green to blue to purple colors fill up a lot more of the brain when we're using x-rays. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, proton therapy is often used alongside of other cancer treatments, such as surgery, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. These are all different forms of treatment for cancer. Uh, all cancers are different, and proton therapy is just one of the treatments. Again, uh, because protons has a lower risk of radiation-related side effects, it often can make treatment with other forms of uh, cancer treatment more tolerable for the patient. Okay. Now, people often ask who can get proton therapy. Okay. Now, again, proton therapy is a type of radiation, and radiation is a treatment type for cancer. Now, in particular, when we're trying to spare parts of the body that are sensitive to radiation, Okay, when we're treating brain tumors, there's a lot of other parts of the brain that are very sensitive uh, to radiation. Okay, a lot of people can have cognitive or memory loss, uh, cognitive dis dysfunction or memory loss over time after exposure to substantial amounts of radiation to the brain. So if we're treating the brain, it's often um, 
preferable to decrease the amount of radiation to other parts so that people have less potential uh, risks, especially long term. Okay, if somebody's had surgery and they need radiation afterwards, um, having radiation done with protons again decreases amounts of radiation to other areas. People who've had previous brain tumors and now have a recurrence of a brain tumor, they've often had a radiation treatment previously. If we're needing to do radiation again, the previous treatment often includes radiation to many structures nearby. Using protons the second time around to spare those other structures can substantially limit the risk of radiation being done a second time. Often patients don't receive radiation a second time because of the concerns of significant side effects by doing a second course of treatment. If we're doing it with protons, it's often substantially less, and we do routinely treat people with repeat radiation with protons. Okay. Uh, people who have brain metastases where the tumor has spread to the brain and gone to multiple spots of the brain, we do stereotactic radiation therapy, which is a focused type of radiation that goes to individual small areas, and that can be done with protons. Okay, uh, and patients with benign tumors, especially benign tumors, people can live a very, very long time and the long term risks of radiation can be quite significant in somebody who has 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 more years expected life expectancy. And so uh, using protons in these cases is certainly very valuable because we can very much decrease their long-term risks. Because once you do radiation once, you can't take that radiation away and effects can happen at any time in the future. And once protons enter the, the, the brain, there's less radiation to other parts of the brain. And any part of the brain that does not get any radiation and is spared will not have any risk of radiation-related side effects. Now, People ask if they should get proton radiation, okay, proton therapy. We do use proton therapy for a lot of different tumors, particularly solid tumors, okay, so like a brain tumor or a lung tumor. These are solid tumors. That's in contrast to something like leukemia, which is a liquid tumor in the blood, okay. Uh, proton therapy can be used for many, many tumors, okay. Um, You'll, patients have their own doctors, okay, and um, often recommendations for treatment are going to be made based on the diagnosis stage, factors of the patient, etc. Okay, um, do I have to quit my job or school to have treatment? A lot of people continue working right through the course of radiation treatment. Okay, different. Uh, treatments have different side effect profiles. Some patients have very limited side effects at all during treatment and just continue working or continue going to school. Um, other people, they may need to take time off because of the side effects of treatment uh, for a certain period of time. It varies from person to person, but radiation therapy is an outpatient treatment. You don't have to be hospitalized to receive radiation treatment. The treatments tend to be pretty short. People can often go to work and still manage to come for treatment before, after work, or in the middle of the day somehow, uh, and the same goes for school. Okay. What makes our center different from other proton uh, facilities? There are, are not many proton therapy centers in the country as it is. There are only two in the state of Texas. We have pencil beam scanning protons, which is a newer generation of technology for protons, which allows very small beams of protons to be uh, delivered to an area, which makes for excellent precision uh, and also decreases the amount of radiation entering the body. Okay, protons already does not have any exit dose, but treatments with pencil beam scanning protons also have less entrance dose in comparison to the older type of proton radiation, proton therapy called passive scatter. Um, we can do intensity modulated proton therapy because we have pencil beam scanning protons, and uh, this allows us to even spare further the amount of radiation received by other parts of the brain or other parts of the body
Thank you so much, Dr. Mangona. What a great presentation. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who joined us today. Our next educational event is going to be in June, where we will be discussing proton therapy for prostate cancer. So stay tuned for registration details, and I hope everyone has a great day.